Hi guys, uh, so let's continue with our heart failure um, and finish it up. So like we said that, just a recap, we said in heart failure, the problem that you have, you've got fluid overload. Fluid overload. Fluid overload. And this fluid overload manifests in the form of pulmonary edema, um, um, swelling of the legs, of the legs, swelling of ascites. I'm just going to mix right heart failure and left heart failure at this point. Um, increased JVP. Um, you know the signs of portal hypertension, right? That's basically that. So this is what you have. You've got a patient that is, that is fluid overloaded. That's your heart failure. And when you've got fluid, when you when you when you've got fluid overload, the more fluid you have uh, in your ventricle, in your ventricles. The more fluid you have, these muscles, they hypertrophy and become bigger because of the pressure that is here. Because you've got too much fluid here. You've got too much fluid here. So, but now you have your rest system. This rest system is the same system that picks up that because of this heart failure, you've got a reduced cardiac output. So what it does... The reduced cardiac output is there because of a pump failure. Pump failure. So, and then the body activates the, re, the, the, the rest system. What the rest system does, so you've got this because of heart failure. Even though you've got a lot, uh, um, you've got fluid overload, but you still have a reduced cardiac output. And the kidney interprets this reduced cardiac output as a sign that we have a decreased blood volume. So what do we do? Let's increase blood volume so that we can increase our cardiac output. That's how the kidney interprets it. So when you activate the rest system, what the rest system does, we, we, we have spoken about it. Your aldosterone, which will be released there, will cause the reabsorption of sodium. And when you reabsorb sodium, water will follow. So now you've got overload, and then you are still, um, you are still absorbing more water. So you are worsening the overload. This is why the rest system is wrong in a patient with heart failure. It needs to be stopped. It needs to be to be inhibited. And uh, when you've got a chronic reduced cardiac output you get a chronic activation of your rest system and that's not what you want so and another thing that uh, uh, um, the rest system does like i said is vasoconstriction and this vasoconstriction is the one that increases the afterload afterload and we know that if you increase the, uh, you you want the afterload to be decreased for your heart to be able to pump easily or with ease. But the minute you increase the afterload, you are making the heart to pump harder because it now it has got to to pump against a higher resistance in order to get the blood out of the heart. You don't want that, but the rest system does that. It makes the heart to pump harder because of that vasoconstriction that it does. That's why when you give a patient ACE inhibitors, like I mentioned, perindopril, lisinopril, captopril, uh, enalapril, these drugs, they shut this system. They block, um, they block the conversion of angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. Because it is the angiotensin 2 that causes this vasoconstriction and causes the release of aldosterone, which does that. So this is why ACI, 
want you guys to get this because this is where heart failure is this is where heart failure is it's easy to give a patient furosemide furosemide it's easy to give a patient furosemide or even a thiazide and then they lose the fluid and then they they go and 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 and, and pee so you deal with the overload then they they they, they become they 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 become um euvolemic but as long as this system is still activated whatever water that they drink whatever that they drink whatever water amount of fluid they drink will be reabsorbed because you've got this chronic activation of the rest system so whatever water they drink they will it's gonna be it's gonna uh, it's gonna be reabsorbed into the into the body and uh, and the heart failure um, will continue to worsen. And I've explained that these drugs are good in terms of uh, halting or stopping the remodeling uh, effect that is caused by, uh, by, that happens in heart failure. So the remodeling eff effect that is caused by, uh, by the heart failure. So that's the rest system. I, I cannot over explain this. I cannot over explain this guys that's why you can treat you can give a patient anti um diuretics you can give them diuretics and then in a week's time they are back in the hospital again because the fluid that they've been drinking ever since you discharged them have been getting into their body they're not uh, uh, um they were not um urinating that uh, the, that fluid because this system is chronically activated in their body and it keeps taking the water into the body. It keeps taking the water. So in a week's time, so a patients that are not in, a, in a, that, are, that are not taking easy inhibitors, that um are, have got heart failure, they keep being hospitalized. They are readmitted and admitted and admitted and ad ad admitted. You discharge them today. Next week they are back. You need to put patients on easy inhibitors and beta blockers. Okay, I cannot over explain this. Now I'm going to move on to the second part that I want to get to. So keep this in mind. There's another neurohormonal system that has been found that it's very important in the, in the management of, um, of a heart failure patient. So I hope you guys, you remember this. Um, you know, when we're still in medical school, We were told that that things like this are not a necessity. They are not necessary that we know them, but they are nice to know. I want to tell you that these are not a nice to know them. They, we have to know them. We have to know them. Um, so what happens is that ventricles and your atria, as they dilate, as they dilate, because so. In heart failure, you've got dilatation of this because of the fluid that is 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 inside. Because because of the fluid that uh, you've got. Remember, you've got pressures, high pressures here, and you've got a lot of fluid. Like I said, that a patient who's got heart failure, whenever they eject blood, there's a lot of blood that remains in the ventricles every time. There's a lot of blood, and that blood is the one that uh, causes the ventricles to become bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger so now when you've got a ventricle that is big the the atria there that is also having high pressures because of the ventricle will secrete an ANP and then this one will secrete a BNP brain natriuretic peptide atrial uh, natriuretic peptide so these are the peptides the hormones that are going to be secreted so why does the heart secrete these hormones? These are natriuretic. The natri means sodium, uretic means to pee. So these hormones knows that if they are released, once they cause the excretion, excretion of sodium, water will follow. They cause the excretion of sodium. They know that water will follow 
and if water follows then the water that is troubling them here i'm using like terms so you can understand the water that is accumulated here will be able now to go out so when a heart starts to secrete this it's telling you that i'm overloaded as the heart so it starts to, to secrete this because it knows that if bnp is secreted then sodium will be excreted and then water will follow listen to this when you've got a patient who's got heart failure you take their b you, you take blood you do bnp levels the bnp levels will be greater than 300. if you do bnp levels on a patient that's got heart failure a bnp will confirm your diagnosis if you've got a patient who's got symptoms but you are like Mm -mm, i'm not really sure just because they are a class two or a class one remember a class two a class one especially, especially a class one according to the new york heart association those patients that aren't really really symptomatic like class one is asymptomatic so if they are when you listen to the history there are things that are like sort of like making you to to suspect them to confirm heart failure just do bnp it will come back high and that patient has got subclinical heart failure bnp is also very good the higher the bnp is the more severe the heart failure is this thing can come you can take this and then it's about it's about five thousand so when you admit a patient when you do a bnp it also helps you to sort of like um to assess if your patient is improving or not because as you treat them as you the, as you manage them the bnp should drop and drop and drop and drop and drop so it should go down so it can also be used diagnostic and also to monitor therapy so there is a class of drugs called the ani angiotensin receptor neprilysin inhibitors let me tell you about the neprilysin neprilysin is a is an enzyme that deactivates bnp and anp remember we want to achieve homeostasis all the time so you cannot afford to have a bnp that is chronically activated you need to deactivate it so the neprilysin enzyme is the one that deactivates that the, the bnp but if you've got chronic uh, fluid overload you want that bnp to continue working because you want to take to get rid of the water so if you want to prolong the life of your bnp then then you need to inhibit the neprilysin enzyme so ni's or neprilysin enzyme inhibitors they are good at their job is to is to is to uh, inhibit this enzyme so that you can prolong the life of the BNP so that you can continue uh, natriuresis and continue diuresis because that's what you want in, in heart failure. These drugs are only found in the private sector in South Africa. So you know what? Um, there's a study that was done in Barcelona in 2014, the, para the paradigm study, um, paradigm study of, of heart failure. So what they did there is this is important guys ne? this is important what they did they combined an arb inhibitor with a, an ni neprilysin inhibitor and then they did a study and then they found that these class of drugs are much more potent and much more superior compared to our remember the gold standard now in terms of anti-failure in all the countries anti-failure is ac inhibitors and beta blockers beta blockers and also um aldactone i'm forgetting a fourth one there's some there's another one here but the commonly used ones are beta blockers and ac inhibitors so it was found that when you give a patient any they are much more potent and much more effective than these but as things stands now these are the only drugs that we have in south africa which are also good as well but they don't even come close to the anis these ones like for instance um i've got a, um, a pharmacist friend of mine that i asked about these drugs that apparently this drug the name of this drug in south africa is called um, entresto 
and trust on. So it's in the private sector. So I asked her, apparently a packet of this that can last you for a, a month is about 700 rand. It's about 700 rand, just one packet. That's how good they are. That's how good they are. So when you combine an I, ARB and a, an NI, which is a nephrasin inhibitor, you will take care of the of the rest system here. You will switch off the rest system here if you use an, an ARB. An ARB. Remember, there are two ways of switching off the rest system: AC inhibitor or an ARB, angiotensin receptor blockers. Um, so th those are the two drugs that can switch off the rest. So, like I said, in heart failure, you want to switch off the rest system. You don't want it to be chronically activated. So the ARB will do that. And then on top of that, the NI will take care of this system because you want to switch on this system, the, natri na the natriuretic peptide system. You want to switch on this system, but you want to deactivate this one. So you switch on this system because you want its effect. The, it's, the effects of a natriuretic pe peptide in heart failure are good. You want those effects. So to prolong their life, you give an NI. So the combination of dealing with this um, rest system and the, the natriuretic peptide system has proven to be very helpful in heart failure patient. It helps in terms of they are more, uh, it decreases uh, morbidity and mortality and reduces uh, hospital ad, uh, readmissions and hospitalizations, all those things, and the complications of the heart failure. So, guys, remember one thing from this you want to deactivate the rest system. Drugs that do that is your AC inhibitors. If your patient does not tolerate your AC inhibitors, you can give them an ARB. Hopefully, they will toler tolerate the R ARB. And another thing that you can give them is Carvedulo, which is a beta blocker. It also helps as well. It's also, it, it is also an anti-failure as well. Um, then we trust maybe one day we are going to have these drugs in the public sector. The ANIS. The ANIS. So, guys, that's heart failure. That's heart failure. Um, okay. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I believe that we learned a lot today. Thank you. Bye.